welcome to Prescott, Arizona. A place rich in natural beauty. And equally rich in history. Home to some delicious restaurants. And to one of the most unique hotels that we've ever stayed at. Not to mention one of the best. So join us as we partner up with Visit Prescott. Prescott is really known for its hiking trails, and I think you're really missing out if you don't do at least one while you're here. So the Prescott National Forest is a huge expanse of land here in central Arizona, and today we are going to be hiking to one of the most scenic landmarks in all of Prescott. We are going to go up to the top of Thumb Butte. This hike is a bit on a steep side, but luckily they do have benches that you can rest on. Of course, yours truly wouldn't need something silly like a bench to rest on. What are, what are you doing? So the Thumb Butte Trail here is the most popular trail in all of Prescott National Forest. It sees over 3,000 visitors, or maybe it's an average of 3,000 visitors a month. The main loop trail here is about 1.75 miles in length, and there are all, also all these little offshoots, so it can be about 2.5 miles if you want it to be. The butte itself stands about 6,514 feet, and we are towering about 1,000 feet over the Prescott Valley down below. Normally you can use one of these spurs to get super close to the Thumb Butte, however, it is a habitat for a peregrine Peregrine? One, one of those, falcons. They happen to be one of the fastest animals on earth and they actually nest in the sides of cliffs. So you can't climb or get close to the butte this time of year during nesting season. That was a really nice hike. Yeah, so it's a loop hike. You can go counterclockwise or clockwise. We decided to go the counterclockwise direction, so we had a more gradual ascent and a steeper descent. Um, but you could also go clockwise, and you would have a pretty steep ascent at first, but then it would be a nice gradual kind of back down. Yeah, so uh, pick your pain, I guess. All right, let's go see some more Prescott. We are feeling a bit peckish, so we decided to grab a little bite to eat. We stopped at this cute little cafe called El Gato Azul. It has uh, lots of th different offerings, but the really cool thing is that they have a tapas menu, which is absolutely delicious. A really extensive tapas menu. So we had the green chili wontons, which were absolutely oh, incredible. They, they may have been my favorite. Like, they were like a flavor explosion in your mouth. They were. It was cilantro, cream cheese, parmesan, and green chilies, With which... just a little spice. Just a little bit. And then we also had um, the beef and blue tacos. The beef was tender, super delicious. Had a chimichurri sauce on top. The, it, what, like, they pickled cabbage or onions on top? One of the two, I can't remember. But it was delicious. And we um, also had the calamari frita, which was really good as well. Mm -hmm. Everything was delicious. I wish I was hungrier so I could have eaten more. Uh, those three dishes filled us up. Definitely check that place out. But um, we have some more exploring to do here in town. So now that we are filled up from that amazing lunch, we're gonna explore a little bit more, but it got cold, so I had to go get my hat. It's, it's, it's getting chilly. <laughs> the weather's kind of changing here. Yeah, and it's pretty windy, and uh, we're going to explore the Charlotte Hall Museum, which is a museum of, I, I believe, more along the lines of Arizona history. We'll see as we go through. It's an open air museum, and it's got lots of old buildings and stuff to see here, so it looks like a really cool place. So your first question may be is why is this called the Charlotte Hall Museum? And it's called the Charlotte Hall Museum because it was created by Charlotte Hall. So Charlotte Hall was a woman well beyond her time in the late 1800s, early 1900s, and she felt it very important to preserve the history of Arizona. So she started collecting all these amazing artifacts in 1928, opened this museum to start sharing those with the people. So this building behind me was actually the first governor's mansion here in Arizona. It was actually the first territorial capital. It was built in the 1860s, cost $6,000 to build and took about six months to construct. This building was eventually bought by Charlotte Hall for the purpose of opening her museum. 
So this is actually a replica of what a schoolhouse would have looked like in 1867. They just had single benches. They didn't have desks or anything like that. They wrote on these cool slate boards. I guess they're kind of cool. I don't know. But they wrote on slate boards because paper was expensive. And school was actually a financial burden for most people. So it was really expensive and not a lot of people could afford it. So they would pay in goods sometimes. So they would send baked goods or other things to, I guess, the teacher. And so they would teach their kids. <laughs> Welcome to Fort Misery. This building is the oldest log cabin in Arizona. It was built in 1864 and Charlotte Hall actually had this moved a half mile to its present location. She had all the logs numbered so that they could be put back in order the way that they originally were constructed. This place is absolutely amazing. We didn't show you everything, of course, because we'd be here all day. There's so much stuff here. <laughs> it's a really, really cool museum. And one of the best parts is that several of the buildings throughout have docents there. So they will answer all your questions, tell you the history. Super and helpful. So it's so helpful. I mean, there's lots of stuff that you can read, but it's very nice to have them there. Definitely worth coming to, to learn a little bit about the history of Arizona here. So it's been a pretty long day. So I think we're going to go ahead and check into the hotel now. Yes, and we're super excited about that. I am super excited about the hotel so let's get there and see this it's, it's gonna be an amazing place <sighs> wow so we had just arrived at our accommodation here in Prescott for the next couple of nights we we're staying at the motor lodge and it is amazing will you look at this place this place is it's amazing so this place was built in 1937 as a motor lodge so what that means is a mo or motor court usually there's a garage and you can park your car like right at your door to the hotel so it's really cool so you can see that there are garages out here that you can pull in obviously the van won't fit so we're parked out on the side of the road amazing and there are 13 rooms here so it's a boutique style hotel and every single room is different so we're staying in room number six. It also has the nickname of the Stardust Room. So the headboard and the furniture in this room actually came from the old Stardust Hotel. In Las Vegas. Yeah, so it's really cool. So apparently they were going to just kind of throw this stuff out and some lady bought it and they ended up being able to buy it for this hotel. And it's amazing. I love that headboard. It's like a king and queen kind of headboard. You can see like the little intricate details of the carving. Is it a carving? No. They're crowns. They're crowns. But that's a, that's a lot to just say there's there's crowns in the headboard. <laughs> it's really cool. But this place is, is so cool. They even have little bikes that you can borrow. So they have tandem bikes and they have some um, single riders as well. I don't know if we'll get around riding the bikes because I hear we're going to get some snow here. So, yeah, but that's maybe. a surprise for us. But they're free for any guests to grab and ride into town. We are only three blocks away from downtown. Another cool thing about this hotel is the little details. Mm -hmm. So if you notice there's old phones, there's all kinds of artwork and sculptures and stuff in the rooms that are a blast from the past and it, it just adds to the atmosphere and I'm in love with this place. Yeah, like I've been grinning like from ear to ear since we got here. The caretakers actually showed us a few of the other rooms as well. Everyone is very individual and beautiful. Um, if you enjoy historic stuff like this and places that are very unique and just amazing, you're gonna, you'd love this place. So, wow. I love it here. I was just looking through this drawer over here and I found this in there. So this is a menu from, it looks like the Stardust in Las Vegas. It's kind of, it's torn. You can open it up and see what was inside. Isn't that awesome? Guess what? It snowed. Yes, so we were very surprised that uh, a storm came, a snowstorm came through here. We were so excited to explore and to see the snow on the ground. So we made a beeline out here to Watson Lake, which is absolutely gorgeous without any snow, but we figured with the snow, this place would be even more magical and more beautiful than it already is, if that's possible. I don't know because it's pretty amazing out here. I absolutely love it. So Watson Lake is a park here in Prescott that is 
ran by the city, correct? Mm -hmm. Yeah, it's ran by the city. It is stunningly beautiful. So we had actually planned to come out here a couple of days ago and go kayaking, but this storm that was rolling in bringing the snow also brought along with it like 40 mile an hour gusts of wind. So we just felt it wasn't safe to come out here at the time. But yes, you should definitely come out here and kayak, come out here and hike, spend a day. It's Spend the gorgeous. entire day, pack a picnic lunch. It's definitely, it's $3 to get in. So bring the family and come out here and enjoy <laughs> yourselves. So a little bit more about this is, so this wasn't originally a lake. So these are granite dells out here with these rocks that almost look smooth, but when you get a close look at them, they're actually really grippy. So they don't feel slick at all. This place was actually created because the granite creek was dammed back in the early 1900s. And it basically created these reservoirs here. And then the city decided to um, preserve it. But wow, I could stare at it all day. After roaming around at Watson Lake, we were starving. So we found a place called Colt Grill. Now, just as a warning, being from North Carolina, there are three things that are sacred to us in North Carolina. That's mama, college basketball, and barbecue. So we were a little hesitant on picking a barbecue spot, but let me tell you, I am so glad we did. It was delicious. We ended up ordering their meat platter. So it had a little bit of pulled pork. It had some, some ribs, brisket, and a sausage. And smoked turkey. And smoked turkey. And it was a turkey broth. And actually that turkey brat was, I'm not a big turkey fan, but the smoked turkey and the turkey brat were, they were crazy good. I loved the ribs and the brisket was so on point. The brisket is amazing. However, this is, this next one is going to be hard to talk about because mac and cheese. It's always a point of contention when you go to a restaurant mm -hmm. and order mac and cheese. It's hard to find good mac and cheese, I think. I think that this is the best mac and cheese I have had in a restaurant. It was delicious. Should have ordered some to go, actually. I know. I, I could have just nommed down on that later. The decor screams Wild West. Their chairs are, they, they look like cowhide. Yeah, yeah, it's really cool. It's a cool little place. They have a full bar and they have all kinds of bourbon and whiskey and some unusual beers as well. And back to the barbecue, they make their own uh, sauces in-house. So they're all house-made sauces. My favorite, we tried four of them, but my favorite was the sweet fire. So, cause I've, I've got this thing for sweet and spicy. I love sweet and spicy. I, so. I would have to agree that was my favorite, but I've tried the other ones and they were all good. So yeah. you're not gonna go wrong if you just are forced for some reason to pick one sauce. So the conclusion to this story is go to Colt Grill. It's delicious. <laughs> Right across from the Colt Grill is this beautiful building here. It's the Yavapai County Courthouse, which fun fact, this belongs to the county, not the city. And the city actually surrounds this little square. That's right. We're pretty much standing in the county seat right now. And then if we just cross the street over to Whiskey Row, which is where we're going in a few minutes, we will be in the city of Prescott. But cool thing about this building, it was actually built in 1916. The square is absolutely beautiful. It's pretty in the snow it's too. It's pretty in the snow too, but like in, I bet you in the spring, in the summer with flowers and trees, it's just gorgeous. In fact, it was in a Hallmark movie. So one of the favorite things that people love to do here in Prescott is visit Whiskey Row. So yeah, <laughs> so Whiskey Row is uh, basically a row of saloons or once it was a row of saloons. They say that at one time there was much as 40 different saloons here. You might wonder how did all these saloons end up in Prescott and that was the gold rush. So when the gold rush came in, they prospectors came in and businessmen came in. Ladies and of the woman, yes. ladies of the night. <laughs> uh, cowboys like famous people have been here like the Earp brothers and Doc Holliday. So it's a very historical place, very deep in like American history or Southwest history at least in gold mining history. And they like to drink, so there were a lot of saloons. Despite the massive number of saloons back in the day, there are only a handful left. So we thought what better way to get a feeling for it than to go into, I believe it's the oldest saloon here. So we're gonna go ahead into the palace and grab a drink. This saloon is like stepping back into the Wild West. The first thing that you're gonna notice, other than the Batwing doors, is this massive, beautiful wooden bar. The sides of the walls have historical photos and mounted, I don't know if those are deer or elk. They look like elk, they're, they're huge. 
To Whiskey Row. To Whiskey Row. <laughs> Interestingly enough, this place was considered fireproof. Uh, the place actually burned to the ground J July 14th. 1900. The patrons, when they noticed that this place was burning, they moved the bar and all the liquor across the street actually to the city square that we were in earlier. All the staff here, they dress up in uh, period attire. So our server and the hostess were absolutely freaking incredible looking. And the service here was actually really amazing. We've had such an amazing time in Prescott. It's actually a really, really great town. We have thoroughly enjoyed our time. And you know what I really love is I love this downtown area. I love the history here. I love the old buildings and all the architectural detail. It's a really cool place. I love the surrounding nature, Watson Lake, the Thumb Butte. I mean, you could hike here for forever. Ever. <laughs> forever. <laughs> the Motor Lodge absolutely is one of the coolest places I've ever stayed. So we hope that you enjoyed exploring this amazing little town with us. If you are looking to plan your own trip here make sure that you check out visit Prescott they have a wealth of knowledge and information about the area so you can plan an amazing trip for yourself so that's gonna do it for this video make sure you hit that like button hit that subscribe button and if you have any questions make sure you leave them in the comment section below all right guys until next time stay, stay wonderful, wonderful. Call it a day.